What's up, Room 10? Time to get a little science on. Grab those science books. Let's get those things opened up. We're on page 111. 111. Uh, we are starting off chapter 5. So we just finished chapter 3. Hope you guys did well on your science test you guys took on Thursday. Um, if you studied, I'm sure you did great. If you didn't, hmm. All right. So we are picking up chapter 5. We jumped over chapter 4. And we're on page 111 so we're gonna start off with remember now thy creator if you're not there yet go ahead and hit pause and then once you guys have your books ready to go then go ahead and hit play again all right here we go what do airplanes and roofs have in common both of these objects are affected by the way the air flows around them one of the principles of airflow is called the Bernoulli principle Scientists use this principle to design airplane wings that give the lift needed for airplanes to fly. Sweet. In recent years, scientists have found that severe winds during hurricanes may cause roofs to act similar to airplane wings. As the winds flow over a roof, the roof tends to lift up. To design better roofs, scientists often use a wind tunnel <clears throat> to duplicate the hurricane winds. They experiment with different roof designs to see which are better and which ones are better able to withstand the severe winds. I'm sure they have the same issue with like tornadoes too, because tornadoes winds are usually even stronger than a hurricane's winds. Although man cannot control the weather, God's creation stays consistent, and this consistency allows man to design ways to improve his surroundings. So the fact that Creation is so consistent, it makes it so we can plan on things that are going to happen. All right, let's go ahead and turn the page to page 112. Picking up up there at the top, it says, God created the earth with all the necessary conditions to maintain life. He knew what conditions man needs, and he planned, planned for these needs to be met. Part of this plan is the protective layer that surrounds the earth. Yeah, Mr. The earth has a special covering that protects its surface. This thin blanket of gases and dust particles that surround the earth is called the atmosphere. If the earth were the size of an apple, the atmosphere would be thinner than the apple's skin. It's kind of crazy to think about. So cut an apple in half, and then if that was the earth in the whole atmosphere, just the little edge of the skin of the apple would be the same as the thickness of like our atmosphere in relation to the size of our earth so it's pretty crazy so this very thin covering is very important to us <clears throat> the atmosphere lets in the right amount of energy from the Sun and provides the air we breathe it also prevents extreme weather differences on earth so without that atmosphere like when the Sun would go down like all of a sudden it would be like negative degrees or if we didn't have that atmosphere with the sun was out, it would be like hundreds and hundreds of degrees outside. Like you wouldn't be able to go outside, you'd burn up. So it's pretty amazing the way the atmosphere works to protect us from those crazy radiation rays coming off the earth, off the sun, you know, like it, it protects us. Um, but then also holds in that heat and then holds in the oxygen that we need to be able to breathe. Sweet. Contents of the atmosphere. Here we go. One part of the atmosphere is air, but what is air? Air is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other gases in the atmosphere. We cannot see or feel these gases, but they're very important to life on Earth. Yeah, if you've ever not been able to breathe, like got hit in the stomach, remember your diaphragm gets pushed up, and then all of a sudden you can't breathe, you know that oxygen is important because you've been without it for a little bit. Or if you know you got pushed to the bottom of the pool for some reason and you need oxygen, it's super important. So if we didn't have that, we'd have problems, right? So, plants need the oxygen and carbon dioxide to produce food. People and animals need oxygen to survive. Providing an atmosphere with this blend of gases is one way God meets the needs of living things. So it's amazing. Like, So when we breathe out, remember when we learned about the respiratory system, when we breathe out, what comes out? What was it? Do you guys remember? Mm-hmm, there you go. When we breathe out, that was carbon dioxide. Plants need carbon dioxide, and as those plants are alive, they are releasing oxygen. 
which is what we need. So we make what they need, they make what we need, everybody's happy, right? Awesome. Let's keep going. Another part of the atmosphere is dust particles. When you clean your bedroom, you probably stir up dust. And you've probably been doing a lot of bedroom cleaning because there ain't nothing else to do. You got work to do, you got cleaning to do, then you got gaming to do, right? Or TV to do. Um, yeah, other than that, there's not much else we could do. Maybe go for a walk, take the dog out, you know, get your mask on. I've been wearing my mask, you know, gotta stay healthy. Um, dust particles may seem annoying when you're cleaning, however, they're useful in the atmosphere. Dust helps water droplets and ice crystals and clouds to form rain, snow, and other types of precipitation. And man, we have seen some precipitation that last week, huh? I mean, it rained Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and I think even on Thursday. Um, yeah, so it was dust particles floating around in the atmosphere that helped those water droplets form together. And remember the lady told us it was like a million, millions, whatever, water molecules that go together to make one drop of water. Um, so when you look outside and you see those drops falling, that's a lot of water molecules, right? Sweet. Let's turn the page. Let's keep going. Air pressure. So gravity pulls the atmosphere close to the surface of the earth. At any moment, there are thousands of pounds of air pressure pushing down on you. Look at that. Lifting thousands of pounds right here. Uh, uh. All right. <laughs> the weight of air is called air pressure. In fact, each square inch of space has 14.7 pounds of air pressure. It does not seem that air would weigh very much, but it does because there's a lot of it pushing down in the atmosphere. So you look up, think about all that atmosphere all the way up there, all the air, all the sky, all the way up there. All that's full of air and that pressure is pushing down because gravity is pulling it down. Air pressure is the greatest at the surface of the earth and it decreases as you move away from the surface of the earth or if you gain altitude. Altitude is the measurement of the distance above sea level. So I think here in Menifee, I can't remember if we're like a thousand feet above sea level or something like that, 800 feet above sea level. Uh, if you go to the beach, you're like zero, that's sea level. Hope, hopefully that makes sense. Now you go up into the mountains like Big Bear and you know, you're 7,000, 7,600 feet, something like that. Uh, you know, you're that high above where the ocean is. That's how we figure out the altitude. When you're flying in a plane, they might say, ooh, we just got to our cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. You can go ahead and undo your belts for right now and use the laboratories. Uh, you know, stuff like that happens when you're on an airplane. If you've ever been, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so the altitude affects air pressure. There's less air pressure on a high mountain than at the seashore. However, altitude is not the only factor that affects air pressure. Other factors such as changes in temperature also affect the air pressure. Now on this next little spot, there's a little picture of a barometer. <clears throat> a barometer is an instrument used to measure air pressure. Knowing the air pressure is important when forecasting the weather. Changes in air pressure may mean that a storm is coming. Also, pilots are alert to changes in the air pressure because the changes can affect the flying conditions. Yeah, if you've ever felt turbulence while you were flying on an airplane, that was probably because there was a difference in the air pressure that you were just flying through at 400 miles an hour on the airplane. Um, so yeah, it makes it plane kind of jerk around, shake around, sometimes it makes it drop. Feels like you're on a roller coaster. I like, you know, like, woo, put my hands up. People look at me like I'm crazy. Uh, you know, it's fine. All right, now let's check out Creation Corner. We're gonna call it a day. Some places in our bodies, such as our lungs and inner ears, are filled with air. When we breathe in and out, the air pressure in our lungs changes to equalize the outside air pressure. So there's outside air pressure, and then you got inside air pressure right here. And a lot of the times those things equalize with no issues and you don't even realize it. Our inner ears are often closed, however. This means the air pressure inside our ears may not be the same as the air pressure on the outside. The inequality may cause our ears to hurt as we travel up. So if we're going up a mountain road, sometimes your ears will get, start to get clogged and you feel that pressure and it kind of starts to hurt and then you yawn or you take a drink of something and then boom, your ears pop, right? And then all of a sudden you hear like, 
You're like, oh, I get here again. You know, it's, it's good times. Uh, also, same thing with flying on a plane. That's why little babies scream so much on a plane because they don't know how to make their ears pop. That's why moms are normally trying to give them a bottle or some feed them so that that way they are naturally popping their ears as they're on the way up to that 36,000 cruising altitude. All right, to help prevent this though, God has designed our bodies with a tube that goes from your inner, ye inner ear to the inside of your throat back in there. So when you open or you swallow, you open your mouth real wide like a yawn. Ah, I hope I just made some of you guys yawn doing that. Uh, you know, so if you yawn or if you're swallowing something, that tube opens up. And so the air pressure from outside goes in through your mouth and through that tube. And the air pressure is equalized on the inside of your ear. And you no longer feel that pain. That's what it is when your ears pop. When we swallow, that tube opens up and lets that, that air pressure just go right through. Now, the issue is if you have like a sinus infection or really bad cold, those tubes will get filled up with mucus. Uh, yeah, so they get filled up with mucus. And so when you go to pop your ears and you yawn or you swallow something, it doesn't work. It still like is not working for you. So um, sometimes if you're sick and you're flying, you have that pressure and sometimes it might take like the whole trip or something to like get it to pop. I remember having a sinus infection one time and it felt like someone was hitting me with a baseball bat in the face the entire time like I was on the airplane. I was just like, please either let the plane land or let it crash, one or the other. I'm okay with both right now. Uh, yeah, it, it hurt that bad. Um, hey, miss you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys work on those science projects. Remember, I pushed that due date back to April 30th, but that doesn't mean wait till April 29th or you won't be able to get the experiment done fast enough to make the slideshow. Um, so you're gonna do that experiment, remember, and then you're gonna plug all your information into the slideshow. Uh, basically, all you gotta do is open up the Google Classroom, go to your room 10 science class with me. Uh, the slideshow is right there. All you gotta do is open it. Hey, change some of the backgrounds, change some of the fonts, change some of the sizes of the words. Uh, make it make it yours. Don't just leave it plain with like the gray and the teal or whatever color it is. Um, put your own pictures of you doing the experiment in there. Uh, you can save them, you can send them to your parents' email and then you can pull them from there and drop them into right into the, the Google slide presentation. Uh, save them on the computer. Email them to yourself, save them on the computer, and then boom, you'll be able to drag them right in. And then it's you doing your experiment, and it's super cool. So go ahead, keep working on those. Don't let it get away from you. Uh, I mean, what is today, like the 14th? You still got 16 days. Don't wait till the end, though. Don't wait till the end. All right, hope you guys are doing well. Check it later.